Welcome to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show. Whether you hold a corporate nine to five or have determined that you want to explore the small business realm, this show is for you. Christian Carrillo talks to entrepreneurs and experts in the real estate and small business realms to discover what they do, why they do it, and how they do it to help show you the art of the possible. And now your host, Christian Carrillo. Welcome back to the Real Estate and Small Business Show, where we talk to entrepreneurs about what they do, how they do it, and why they do it to help show you all the art of the possible. Today, we've got a special, special interview for you folks. Galileo Galilei says that you cannot teach a man anything. You can only help him discover it within himself. Our guest today will show you all why that is true. Our guest is the co-founder of Mighty Meals and Taco Rock, Stefano Marzano. Thank you for being on the show, my friend. It truly is a pleasure to have you on. Yeah, I'm excited to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. So born into a family of chefs, Stefano of Fairfax, Virginia, knew that food and beverage was in his blood. He started working at his parents' restaurant at the age of 13, and by 15, had made his way into the kitchen as a cook at his family's fine dining Italian restaurant, Osteria Marzano. He turned his passion for food into a career when he was just 20 years old after meeting his Mighty Meals co-founders. Together, they shared a vision of creating a meal preparation company that bridged the gap between quality and convenience. He is proud that Mighty Meals creates consistent, delicious, healthy meals in-house from scratch. His passion is providing a top quality product that is affordable and helps people better themselves and their health. Again, thank you so much for hopping on the show, my friend. We're so excited to have you on. Why don't you get us started with a little bit more about who you are and how you got to where you are today? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I'm Stefano Marzano. I'm about tw- I'm 27 years old now. I started Mighty Meals when I was 20 years old with my co-founding partners, Dan and Alex. And um, it's been a wild ride. It's been a lot of fun, you know, a lot of, a lot of headaches and, you know, a lot of ups and downs, so to say, but it's been all worth it looking back now. Uh, When I was 25, I co-founded Taco Rock 2 with uh, my partners, Mike Cordero, Anthony Cordero, Nick Cordero. And that's been exciting as well. So I've been working on those two things for the past few years now. And it's, it's, it's been great. I love that. And, you know, you, you mentioned your age there and I think what you've been able to accomplish at your age, I think a lot of times folks, maybe they, they, they hear that, right. Maybe a lot of times it's folks that are older than you or even younger than you. You're only 27. You started what, when you were 20, could you tell us a little bit more about what that process was like? I know you mentioned your your family had a big influence in sort of the direction that you went, but to start a company at the age of 20, I think, you know, you could have just worked at the local coffee shop, right? If, if you wanted to make some money, what was the story behind that? Yeah, I mean, honestly, in middle school and high school, it, I just was not good at school. I, I mean, I'm not embarrassed about it. I graduated high school with a 1.9 GPA. Terrible, right? Um just got terrible grades. I just, I was never interested in, you know, school as far as like history. The only thing that really interests me is math when it evolved, you know, I guess you could simplify it to like money, any math around money or just stuff like that. I really was just fascinated by that. And, you know, in school, they don't really teach business as far as like taxes, credit. I wish they taught things like that because those are real life values that you need. You know, I learned that after you know, you start, I feel like the younger you learn that, the more successful you'll be in anything you do in life, whether you're an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur. So high school, I just wasn't good at. So when all my friends were going to college, I started working, just work, 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 work. And then I always had this fear of failure. I never wanted to, whatever that was to me, failure was not being successful. Right. So I just worked for my dad and I was constantly just trying to look for opportunity, just trying to do something. Um, And then when I turned 20, I, uh, I, I was working out at a gym where Dan and Alex actually worked at. And um, Alex was actually personal training my mom. 
So I knew Alex and I was just like asking questions about working out. And then I met Dan through Alex and it was kind of just like, you know, we would just say what's up when we saw each other. And then I was going out of town. I remember. And, and Dan comes up to me when I'm walking out of the gym, he's like, Hey man, I know you're going out of town next week, but when you come back, let's get Starbucks. I have like a business thing I want to talk to you about. I was like, okay. And, um, I mean, the summer ride version, I get back, we talk and, you know, I'm 20 years old. Like I literally have, I didn't really grasp the caliber of starting a company. You know, I'm 20 years old. What the hell did I know back then? You know, I was just working um, in my dad's kitchen. And then I got another job, but we'll talk about that later in the podcast because I got fired from that job, but it's all right. And uh, so, you know, I mean, realistically, yeah, I was like, dude, I got the kitchen. Like, you know, I'll, I'll talk to my dad. We'll rent the kitchen on the off hours. So legit, we would work from 10 p.m. to like 9 a.m. and then go deliver the food. And that was like a, literally just a hustle, right? So I had the kitchen and then, you know, Alex had a great bunch of ideas too. So like two weeks later, after we started, like, I think we did like two or three deliveries, right? Sold our first week, sold like 76 meals. We're like, dude, we need Alex. This is way more scope of work than we intention, right? It's just me and Dan in the kitchen. Dan has no culinary experience ever. So I'm like teaching him like, how to cut stuff too. Like, you know what I mean? Like he's all down, like, dude, I'll do whatever it takes, peel potatoes, whatever. So yeah, I mean, we, we literally bootstrapped the business, started it out of my dad's kitchen on the off hour. So, I mean, you know, 20 years old, you know, the first 18 months in my dad's kitchen, when everyone's out partying, you know, living the college life on Friday, Saturday night, like I would check my phone, like at 1 a.m., everyone's at the bars hanging out having a good time and it was just like I had a little bit of FOMO but then I was like you know what I'm gonna run with it man I I I, you know I had some medical issues too like when that started and just kind of like went through kind of like a low point so it was just jab after jab right you you're I was in a dark tunnel as far as like where's the light right and it was just so just uncharted waters, so to say. So I didn't know, you know, I just, I, I just trusted my gut the whole time. It was hard. It was terrible. I worked for free. We, we all worked for free, you know, for two years and, and all of us had other jobs too, when we started it. Cause you know, I was 20, so I was still living at home. Dan and Alex had a lot more bills than me. So it, it, it was, we, it was a ride, you know, it still is a ride, but it's, it's grown to something beautiful now. And, and I'm really proud of, of what we've made today. I love that. I think that that, that is a, such an amazing story. Right. And um, you, you sort of mentioned there that while you're sort of trying to build up this business, all of you are holding down other jobs as well. And maybe you're missing opportunities of, of being with loved ones or friends or, or the opportunity to, to travel. Right. What sort of kept you all going through that, right? You, I, I guess you all had this vision for what the long term could be like, but you know, starting a company is no easy task, right? I'm sure you all had your ups and your downs, and and things went wrong. What kept you all going through that process? Honestly, you know, it took. I, I can be honest because I'm like the youngest one out of the three. And like I said, you start a company at 20, you really don't know, like, maybe I didn't, you know, I was just like, I didn't really know what to think. I was like, ah, oh, maybe it's like a side hobby. I didn't know, right? I'll tell you what, year two, year two, so I don't know what the hell happened, but like, I guess I grew up, right? And realized like, I, I, I got dialed in and I started to realize how big this thing could be. So I doubled down and we just got so laser focused as far as let's grow this thing. Let's grow. You know, it was, I'll tell you what, there's no perfect time to do something. There's no perfect way to get there. You know, I didn't go to a four year. I don't have an MBA. I tell you, I just bootstrapped, did what I know, trusted my gut and just did right by the people, you know, had good business practices. And we just provided a great service and a great product. And I'll tell you what, I mean, it's really simple. It's a lot easier said than done, but it takes, you know, a consistent commitment of those things and you will get there. I promise you that a lot of people just, they lose the consistency. That's the hardest thing is to stay consistent, whatever it is, diet, working out, starting a business, you know, creating that, turning that hobby into a real 
business that can scale, you know? I love that. I love that. And, and one of my mentors who I think you might know, uh, Scott Parker, he always tells me consistency is key and nothing beats hard work, right? Because uh, I think a lot of times people see entrepreneurs and they'll, they'll think they're overnight successes, right? But they don't know the, the story of the years of the, you know, having to run through walls. Um, and I think to your point, right, maybe knowing your why and being consistent with everything, knowing that it's a long-term play is just so important. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, Scott's a great dude. I love, you know, going back and forth with him. He's always got great ideas and he's right. I mean, it's so funny though. I've been doing this. I've been doing Mighty Meals almost, you know, seven years um, in September. So about six and a half years now. And this year alone, literally in the past, like five months, everyone's like, oh, you guys are killing it. You guys are killing it. I'm like, yeah, it took six years to get to this point and three years of no vacations and working mm. seven days a week and constant, just grind, grind, grind. You know, mm. that's the thing on the, when, when that is really, it's, a, it's, it's such a mental game, honestly, in my opinion, starting a, starting a company is mental and physical, but I, I think it's more mental than physical, you know, working long hours. That's, I, I don't mind that. That's not hard. You know, like the physical labor is it's, that's mindless work. It's the mental toughness that you need when you don't know when you're putting it financially, you know, all on the line and you don't know if it's going to pay off or not. And you're just like, you know, again, consistent, have passion and trust your gut. I love that. I think that's so powerful. So, so now you're leading me to want to dive into a little bit more about what mighty meals is and how it became mighty meals, right? Did, when you all first started your company, did you all have the sort of grand vision for what Mighty Meals was going to be? Or throughout the years, did it become what it is now? Yeah, it definitely took years uh, to see what it could turn into. Because mm -hmm. when we started, you know, we were a guppy, you know, we were small fish and we were comparing ourselves to medium sized fish, you know, and now we're here and it's like, you know, we're looking at, you know, billion dollar companies national brands we want to be up there on the field playing right next to them side by side you know and it, it took a while to realize the potential right and and i feel like so many people limit themselves to their true potentials because they think they can't make it there in reality is i'm a huge huge like i'm all about visualization and you know seeing things before i'm even there because to me like if you truly believe in something so crazy that you want, no matter how big or small the goal is, if you truly, truly believe in it and set a plan and stay consistent and just keep talking about it and really put it out there in the universe, I, I, I believe that you will get there no matter what. But you got to be willing to put in the work no matter. And it's going to be hard as hell. And you're going to have a ton of failures on the way. And there's going to be a ton of days where you're like, is it worth it? and so many headaches, and so many fuck ups where you're like, can I come back from that? Mm. But you definitely can, you know, mm. I mean, I've learned so much from all the failures and wrongs I've done in the past six years. And I'm glad I've, I've done them. I've done a ton. You know, I still make mistakes. I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. Mm. I love that. I love that. I'm, I'm so, so pumped that you said that, right? Tony Robbins says, where focus goes, energy flows. So I definitely believe in the, the visualization and sort of speaking it into existence, right? And then just getting after it, getting after it. I love that. I love that. So, you know, on, on this topic, I, I wanted to ask you about your growth, right? And then maybe partnerships, team members, mentors, employees, how important have they all been in your success? You know, I think I, I for whatever reason, always hear folks saying, you know, I'm a self-made insert X, Y, or Z. Right. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with that half the time. So I wanted to, to sort of touch on the topic to show folks that a lot of times whenever you're pursuing a new endeavor, you may start off by yourself. Right. But whether it's you getting virtual assistance or looking for team members or partners, it, you don't necessarily have to do it by yourself. So wanted to sort of gauge that for yourself. How important have, have partnerships, team members, employees been for you? Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, I'm the chef and the culinary side. So when we started and it was just us three, that was me. 
as we scaled over the years, we have about 90 employees in, in, in the entire organization. I've taken myself a little bit out. You know, I still write all the menus. I still oversee the entire culinary operation, but I'm not physically on the day-to-day, -day, you know, chopping vegetables anymore. So my big thing now is talent. You know, I am directly where I'm at today. And, and I think Dan and Alex will agree that we are where we at today because of the team we've put together mm -hmm. and how we manage those people. You know, I'm, I, I have people in my company much smarter than me. I know that, you know, we just, we just brought on our logistics director. I mean, the guy's phenomenal. When he starts talking logistics, I'm just like, my head just spins in a circle because I'm just blown away. You know, there's a, and I, and you know, my job now, what I see is how do I take care of my people so they can take care of the company? Mm. And, and, and then I can focus on growing the business with Dan and Alex. Right. And, you know, that's a huge thing. You know, I don't believe I'm just like, you. I, I don't, unless you're like won the lotto or made it big on an NFT, I don't really believe, you know, if, if you're starting a company as an owner, your job is to empower your employees to do better and to give them all the tools they need to succeed in your company or so on. If they want to, you know, go above and do their own thing, you got to respect yeah. it. Right. You know? Yeah. So I, I love I, that. I love yeah. that. So you hit on so many golden nuggets there, but I think a, a big point that you mentioned is not working in the business, but working on the business, right? The mission, the vision, objectives, a long-term play for whatever your company wants to accomplish. I think that's so, so important. And I'm sure we'll, we'll get into growth as the, the podcast progresses here. But something else you talked about is being the chef, right? I always, my mom's a sous chef. So I always see her as like the creative director, like the artist, like she, she's a visionary. So what, what is that like for you, right? Like coming up with, with what folks may be interested in, having maybe a menu that's inclusive for individuals. What is that process like for you? I mean, I, you know, people that say, you know, there's an arrogance out there where like, you know, I, some chefs, they're just like, my food's the best. I'm not looking at anyone. I'm like, I'm so, I have no ego when it mm -hmm. comes to menu creating, you know, at the end of the day, I have a whole, you know, I have a team of 10 kitchen managers and they help me create menu items. They bring things to the table. You know, I'm open to my partner saying like, Hey, I think we should add this. Awesome. You know, I also look at all our competitors out there. Just, you know, you need to know what's going on in your market space, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Having, you know, turning a blind eye to it is to me silly. Um, so, you know, I, I look at like, how do I bring restaurant quality meals delivered to you that are healthy and stay fresh? Mm. you know I, there's a lot of meal prep companies it's so easy to just you know throw a protein a veg and a, and a starch and just you know ship it out there's a lot of meal prep companies that just you know like to uh to flip meals so to say yeah but tension doesn't stay you know so like our menu we have you know anywhere from 90 to 110 menu items that constantly rotate where we have all types of dietary restrictions all our meals are made to order delivered fresh to your door mm. and we, are, we make everything in house so you know our quality i mean i can preach that all day but i just challenge people to just try mighty meals if they've never tried it i think they'll be pleasantly surprised at how good a meal prep meal can actually be yeah i concur i completely agree i we were joking before the show came on but i've got my my mighty meals gift card right here that I'm, i plan on using shortly so completely agree and and super supportive of that. And, you know, this sort of leads me to my next question with everything that's been going on over the last couple of years with the pandemic, a lot of restaurants being affected. How did the, how would you say that the pandemic impacted your specific business model? Well, I'll tell you what, when it first happened, March, was it 2020? Yeah. March, March, April, 2020. It was, um, I always refer to like nautical terms but it was uncharted waters you know yeah. I, we look you know we had a we had our upper management meeting uh we have it every wednesday it was uncharted waters and it was like what's gonna happen you know and i think the people that really succeeded and and overcame that whole situation are the companies that pivoted adapted and capitalized on it right so what we did you know we knew we had a pivot it's kind of like 
pivot or die almost, so to say, you know, it's just, it's that fight or flight. Like, what are we going to do? Like, what's next? You don't know. You really, we, no one knew at the time what was going to happen. So we knew right away, gyms are shutting down. Okay. At the time we were, we had over 74 pickup locations. So we pretty much put our refrigerators in these gyms and would deliver meals to the gyms and clients could go pick up their meals at the gym they worked out at. So those all shut down. Okay, so we knew we need to double down on home delivery. All right, so instead of two days a week, we went to four days a week home delivery. And then we created an initiative called the Mighty Movement. And there were three pillars to that. Helping local small businesses, giving back to families in need, and providing a good nu nutritious meal for first responders, nurses, doctors, the people who need it the most at the time. The people on the front lines, you know, really fighting this whole COVID thing. So we did, you know, I, a mighty movement was a pretty much a community outreach initiative that, you know, the team put together and I'm so proud of it. It was an amazing experience to be, I mean, we, we, we donated and fed tens of thousands of meals to the community, whether it was, you know, I know the hospital, real food for kids. Uh, we were helping restaurants in need pretty much that, you know, if you bought a gift, a, a, a gift card to that restaurant on our website, we would give you an initiative for mighty, a discount on mighty meals just to try to help any which way we could. Right. Cause like we had, we had a voice and we had a, 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 a community following. So we felt the need that we needed to help out where we could. Right. Even if it was a small dent on the huge problem, it needed to be done. Um, and that really helped us, you know, I, I'm big on community outreach. I love giving back, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but we, we donate thousands of meals every month to foundations, you know, foundations, charities, we give back to first responders and police every single week. You know, we just, we, we built this business on our community support. So it's the only like, now that we're at the point we are, we feel the need to, you know, give back for them supporting us for the past six and a half years. Wow. I love that. And I guess, so are, are all of you, you and your business partners from, let's say the DC metropolitan area, would you say that the need to impact the community, community in a positive way, would you say that that's where it sort of stems from? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. So um, Alex and I both went to Lake Braddock high school and Dan went to Osborne park. So mm -hmm. we're all Nova native so to say <laughs> i love that i love that and you know as i'm here listening to you and thinking about the growth that you've experienced over the six years there have got to be like key clues key key sort of things that you follow on a day-to-day -day, right could we talk a little bit more about your daily routine what would you say has helped you become successful yeah uh routine's great um and, you know, sometimes I'm guilty of it too. I get out of the routine, but staying in routine is great. So honestly, I start the day out the gym. Literally, the, that's the first thing I do. Even before breakfast, I just go to the gym. And then, you know, honestly, you know, it's, it's a lot of meetings, a ton of calls, you know, honestly, just the boring stuff, paying off the credit card, looking at the spreadsheets, the budget, you know, marketing. And like I said, I'm the call. I, I started as the chef, but now I, I really just like, I, I'm heavily involved on the marketing side. Cause I love the creative piece. You know, we have our CTO, we have a CMO, we have a content creator, but I like to be involved in those meetings. Just, you know, I just like to oversee it. You know, it's just a lot of, a lot of, just a lot of tedious, just administrative work lately. Um, we're to the point where we just acquired a 16,000 square foot warehouse that we are currently putting plans together to start our construction, to build that facility out. So we will have a reach. The goal is to deliver from all the Mississippi river East, wow. which is about 22 States. So that's been taking up a ton of my time since I'm the one taking lead on this project. I guess you could say I'm project managing it. So lately, it's just, you know, I'm a desk jockey lately. It's a lot of <laughs> and a lot of Zoom meetings. <laughs> you know, it's not it's not glorious, like in the kitchen, you know, it's it's but you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And honestly, I love it. I love what I do. I love what I do. There's some things I love more than others, but in the whole macro level, 
I love everything about Mighty Meals and running my own company and just being, you know, at the end of the day, if I fail, it's directly my fault. But if I win, it's my team's, you know, it, it it's, I, I, I like having, you know, no, the, the success of me, my future and the company's future is in my Dan and Alex's hands. And, to, you know, I, that's, that's a good feeling. Some people might not like that, but my, my comfort, you know, I like, I like knowing I control directly what happens. I think that's so powerful. And, and it, it almost sounded like you were referencing, not sure if you read extreme ownership by Jocko Willink about how yeah. you lead exactly spot on, right. Where it's like failures on you, but the success it's on the team. So I think that's so powerful, powerful and definitely something that, that hints at the, the, the sort of leader that you are within your organization. So I think that that's incredible. And, you know, you mentioned expansion here a couple of seconds or moments ago, and I definitely want to dive into that, right? So you're, you're trying to expand east of the Mississippi and, and to sort of use your own wording, uncharted territories maybe, right? Where it's, these are new, maybe new markets for you all. How did you all determine that, hey, we're, we're, we're going east from the Mississippi, right? Because I'm guessing you all haven't, haven't sort of tested this out, or is it something you're currently working on? No, so we haven't physically like put out a pilot program to ship meals to, you know, from Miami to Connecticut, so to say, and then all the way, you know, to the Mississippi. But we've built what I see a very, very good, a very strong brand that has, you know, a great mission, great core values, creates a great product and an exceptional service in the DMV. Um, and it's taken six and a half years to do that. You know, like I'm, it did not happen overnight. <laughs> it took six and a half years. Um, a lot of financials, you know, a lot of smart people that are part of this organization and just bootstrap work, 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 work. So now we're seeing that, Hey, we see, I follow the competition very closely. I see what's out there. I don't think there's anything like Mighty Meals, so to say, that's kind of like, um, I'll refer to it as a, a company that's big, small. When I mean big, I mean big. They, you know, they, they do good numbers. They do good revenue. They push out a lot of food. But small as far as they get personal with the clients. They understand that, you know, my client isn't just a person. I value what they do for, you know, I value their feedback to the company. I want to give them, at, you know, there's, and this is where, you know, this is also something we did in the pandemic. We thought right away, we needed to pivot. You know, we are not just a meal prep company. What else can we do? Someone's buying a $12 meal from us. Cool. What added value can we give to them? Not for free. You know, you're buying the meals. What can I give you? So, you know, we created Mighty Fit, which is pretty much, you know, someone to hold you accountable through your journey, whatever it is in health and wellness. You know, if you're trying to lose 10 pounds, trying to gain five pounds of muscle, we are here to support you in any which way we can. And that's a huge thing. You know, a lot of companies are just, they just want you to buy their food and that's it. You know, you get stuck on the recurring model and, you know, they're just, they're billing you every week and sending you food and they don't really give a shit about you. Another beautiful thing is Mighty Meals. We don't have a subscription model at all. It's all a la carte. There's no hidden fees. There's no scams like all these other companies. You want to order one meal to your house? Be my guest. If you never want to order again, that's fine. Maybe we're not the right fit for you, you know? But to me, putting that transparency out with our clients is huge. You know, I never want to lock in a customer. I never want to take advantage of a customer. I really want them to, you know, my, a huge thing is, I value the success of the company and myself of how people speak on me or Mighty Meals when I'm not around or someone mm -hmm. that doesn't know me isn't around. Mm. I truly value that opinion because, you know, we chase perfection. We're never going to get there, but we just constantly chase how do we be better? Every day we can be better. There's still a million things that I want to do better in the company. And we're doing those things, constant actions to make our company better and our product and service better. Wow. Sorry, I got off topic a little bit. <laughs> you, you've, you've almost left me speechless there, right? Because I can tell how much you all value brand equity 
and making this the service and what you all provide very personable to all of the individuals that you all work with and then all of your customers as well, right? I think that it's so, so powerful. And, and when you mentioned the recurring business model and how sometimes firms will get stuck on that, I, I definitely felt that at heart, right? I think all of our listeners will probably understand what, what you're, you're mentioning there because I think it's definitely very true, right? And I think that's, that's definitely something that really sets your company apart from, from your competitors as well. Absolutely. But, you know, and partnerships too, that's a huge thing as we grow. And that's another thing in pivoting, you know, we've done so many things through the past two years to pivot, make the company better. So corporate partnerships and corporate wellness recognition was huge. So Mm -hmm. our CTO, Meezy, really talented dude, um, created essentially, you know, I can't get into details because it's not out yet, but a state-of-the-art partnership where it's all digital. We don't have to physically put a fridge in your gym anymore. You know, we'll still go do events. We'll still have brand recognition there, but as for everything, he just made like a very state-of-the-art digital platform where Mighty Meals and X company can unify into one and almost, I'll just, you just got to stay tuned. <laughs> I can't give it all out yet. Cause it's, it's literally going to launch. You know, I just got the text that we finalized. One of the big partnerships we just finalized is with the St. James. Um, I'm sure you heard of them in Springfield. They're open up in uh, Reston too in the, in the coming months. So really excited to be partnering with them, but they will be the first, company to to start this embedded partnership program that we're launching so just I love that i'm really excited to launch that i love that and i i love how you all don't see success as a zero-sum game right you all work with the community and, and focus on partnerships to grow i think that's so so powerful and and congratulations i think that that's definitely something something exciting to look forward to and i think our listeners will just have to tune in, right? And ch- check out what you all are working on. Absolutely. So Stefano, it has been a pleasure getting to know more about you. And this episode was just full of golden nuggets. And, and it's almost incredible to hear your story, your ups and downs and how you all got started. But are you ready for a quick response round? Yeah. Rapid fire. Let's go. <laughs> all right. So first one here for you. If you lost it all today, lost it all, what would you do? I'd start over. I mean, I, I'm to the point, and I, I tell my fiance this, I could never work for someone. And that's not just me trying, not having an ego. It's just, you know, I like to control. Maybe it's a little bit of OCD. I like to control things. You know, I like to create things. So it would, I would just start another business. Maybe in the food space, maybe not. You know, I, I, I it's, it's, I mean, some people may disagree, but business is almost relative, right? Whatever the company is, whatever you're doing, whether it's a trade, a skill, a service, business is relative. So to say you have an organization, you have to have a good product service, whatever it is, but aside that, you know, you build an organization, you, you, you hire talent, you take care of that talent and you just keep perfecting that, whatever it is you're doing. And, you know, I think you can be successful. If you yeah. say, <laughs> I love that. I love that you have the knowledge and you have the relationships, right? I think nobody can really take that away from you. So I always love when people say, I'll just go back and rebuild. Yeah. Double so, down, baby. You got to. <laughs> <laughs> Going forward, what do you have planned in your business and why? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so like I said, I, I dabbled on it a little bit. We just acquired a building. Super proud of that. I, we've been working on this deal for the past, we've been searching for a building for the past year and a half. We've been working on the deal alone for the past eight months. So it's been, you know, that's been, it's a storm within itself. Mm. We finally got it. We are hoping to break construction June 1st Mm. and be in there by uh, end of Q4. And then really, you know, put ourselves on a regional to national stage. I love that. Super exciting times. And again, my friend, congratulations. I thank you. Thank you. This is just, this is just the beginning for you all. I'm sure. So if you could give our listeners one piece of advice today, what would it be? 
that a lot of people get comfortable with what they have now. But honestly, the, the one thing I will say is the more you can get uncomfortable with being uncomfortable, the faster you will excel in anything that you make yourself uncomfortable in. So many people get uncomfortable, like, you know, in the routine of the nine to five, you know, I make a good salary. I got my 401k retirement. You know, I get to watch Netflix at 7 p.m. And I get that, you know, some, if you're happy with that and you value time with family, I'm not bashing that whatsoever. But I know a lot of people are in that situation and they think, man, what if I start that business? Or what if I, you know, double down on my side hustle and really, you know, go all in. I mean, there's no perfect time and it's going to be hard as hell, but I promise the more you can get comfortable with being uncomfortable, the more you will excel in anything that you get yourself uncomfortable in. If that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. That's literally an MBA right there, right? Like Sir Isaac Newton says, if I can see far, it is because I've stood on the shoulders of giants and that what you just provided I think if our listeners truly listen into that, maybe replay that section, it will open their eyes. Because I think that what you just said is so, so powerful. And I've got to thank you for that, right? Because I think a lot of times, maybe we don't have the folks to tell us that, right? Or we don't have people to look up to. But, you know, for for anything that you may want to be doing, somebody out there has done it before, right? So maybe surrounding yourselves around those individuals or focusing on proximity, right? I think proximity is very important in life. Surrounding yourself around individuals that are where you want to be. I think it's so, so important as well. So couldn't thank you enough for for saying that. Yeah, absolutely. Last one here for you. How can our listeners get to know more about you and connect with you? Yeah. So um, my personal Instagram is chef underscore S-T-E-O, which is kind of like my nickname, chef underscore stale. And then if you want to follow Mighty Meals, which you'll see a lot of my face too, doing recipes and stuff, it's uh, at Eat Mighty Meals on Instagram and Facebook. And then also for all the listeners too, if you do want to try Mighty Meals, you can go on eatmightymeals.com. And if you use coupon code MEAL100, that'll get you $100 off your first four orders. Wow. You all heard it here first. I might have to to use that code. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) Stefano, thank you so much for hopping on the show. This was such an amazing show and you provided so many golden nuggets to our listeners. Super excited to hear where where you all started to see where you all are going. And I know you all are just going to blow us away. So again, congratulations for everything. And thank you for hopping on the show. Thank you for having me. I truly appreciate it. Perfect. We'll, We'll chat soon, my friend. Take care. Absolutely. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate and Small Business for Management Consultant Show brought to you by Quetzal Capital Group. Quetzal Capital Group works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate while also looking to add value in the communities where they operate. Quetzal Capital Group, client-centered, data-driven, result-oriented. Connect with us online at QuetzalCapitalGroup.com to learn more.